Hey guys and welcome to Petrolped. Now imagine you're in the market for a small to medium sized family car. Maybe you've had a Mini in the past and you're after that go-kart feel but you need a little bit more practicality. So the obvious question is Mini Clubman or maybe Mini Countryman. Now behind me is my 2019 Mini Clubman JCW and thanks to Mini UK I've got the latest 2021 Countryman JCW. So I thought it would be really interesting to compare and contrast these two cars in a number of very important criteria. Okay, first up, let's consider looks and size. And I know this bit's very subjective. Now I know styling is very subjective and we all have our preferences, so I'll keep this bit reasonably short. I really like what they've done on this facelift of the Countryman. They've improved it in lots and lots of areas and I think this car looks an awful lot better than the outgoing model. Uh, obvious difference is there's no bonnet scoop on the Countryman where it, there is one on the Clubman, even though that's a fake unless you open it up like I've done on mine. Wheels wise, many of you will know I've changed the wheels on this car to OZ racing wheels, but originally it had the same wheels that the Countryman is running. And I really like those lovely diamond cut wheels. They look really, really smart. And then the only thing I'd probably change on this from a styling point of view, as you can tell, I'm a big stripes fan. So I put some red bonnet stripes and maybe side stripes, and I think this car would look absolutely perfect for me. But the most important comparison, I think, between these two is going to be size and weight. And my initial thoughts would be this is going to be a significantly bigger car. It certainly looks bigger, but it's not actually that much bigger. Both cars are about 4.3 meters long and about 1.8 meters wide. But the Countryman is only 33 millimeters longer and 22 millimeters wider. So it's actually not the footprint of the car isn't that much bigger. The difference, however, is height. You can probably see it from there. But this car is 116 millimeters higher than the Clubman. So that's going to raise the center of gravity and certainly affect things like the handling when we're out on the road. And then finally, both cars are in the region of 1,600 kilos. This is 1,625 kilos and 1,675 kilos, so only 50 kilos difference between the two. And I found that really interesting. So the rest of it, the styling, you guys make your own mind up which one you prefer. But from a size point of view, actually, there isn't a great deal in it. Just checking to see if I can fit some flaps. Now there's a very good chance you're going to want someone sat in the back of one of these. So what's the rear passenger legroom and general comfort like? Do you know what? It's not bad. There's not masses of room in here, but I am a very tall six foot three with a 34 inch inside leg. So I've got very long legs and this seat is as far back as it's meant to go. So leg room is, is okay, could be better. However, what is really good in here is lots and lots of headroom. This higher raised ceiling height or raised roof line just gives a bigger, more airy feeling in here. Not bad. So I wonder how that compares to the Clubman. Right there. Oh, hold on a minute. <laughs> this isn't happening. Nope, <laughs> I'm not getting in there. And this seat is in my driver's position, so exactly the same position. My legs haven't shrunk or grown or anything. It's the same, it's very, very limited. I wonder if I could, hold on. Maybe if I put my leg in differently to start with, put it there. Oh, split out. <laughs> no, that's not happening. So I think it's safe to say the Countryman wins that one by a Countryman mile. Now then, family car means practical and carrying stuff around. Boot space, the all important boot space. What's the difference? 
Now, firstly, when we're talking boot space, there's a very big difference between these two cars. One has a traditional tailgate and the Clubman has the barn doors. Now, you either love them or hate them. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's talk about the Countryman first. Aha, an eager volunteer. <laughs> yes, we need to talk about dogs first of all. Now, before anybody asks, Darcy is inside. She's been to the vet this morning. She's feeling very sorry for herself. Nothing too majorly serious, but she's certainly not feeling the love for the camera right now. But you always are, aren't you, mate? So yeah, perfect amounts of room for the dogs. It is a slightly raised car, so it's maybe a little bit more difficult getting stuff in and out. But the big question is, can you fit a bike in the boot without taking the wheel off? What do you reckon, dude? Do you want to get a bike? So I need a bike. Bear with me. <laughs> Pass the shelf out. And a little bit of fast music. Still got my turbo tyre on. Apologies for that, it's coming off this weekend. Now then, can we? No, it's not quite long enough. However, if I took the front wheel off, that would be okay. For me, I would also probably struggle. The saddle is a little bit tall, so it's not quite big enough to get a bike of my size in, but that's fine because I put bikes either on the roof or for 200 quid, you can get bike prep at the back of this car to allow you to put a tow bar mounted uh, rack on for normal bikes or you could get one that's suitable for an e-bike. So not quite big enough. This doesn't bode well for the Clubman, but we'll give it a go anyway. <laughs> Right, let's just put this on the ground here, or up against this wall. Let's go and have a look at the Clubman. Now then, I'll tell you straight away that the size of this boot is clearly much smaller than the Countryman, but the aperture is also smaller. So getting big stuff in and out, you're gonna struggle a little bit more. You can drop the seats. Now, a couple of interesting things. We've actually got a boot liner in the car because we carry the dogs in the back and that's one of the reasons I love this car so much is it's just so easy when you've got a couple of dogs if we're going to the beach we stick them in the back obviously got the ball wanger in here um, and it just means it doesn't ming up the boot you can take the liner out or hoover it's it's just so easy to keep clean if you had bigger dogs you might want to fit a dog cage or you know a, a dog guard um, so it is much, much more practical than a standard Mini, but not nearly as practical as the Countryman. And I'm not gonna try and get my bike in the back because I tell you for now, I have to take both wheels off and it's a real tight squeeze. So when I'm transporting my bike in this, I use a roof mounted bike carrier. Now, one of the things that you probably need to make sure you either spec or look for if you're gonna buy one of these are the roof rails. You can't retrofit the roof rails. So if you're thinking about carrying a roof mounted bike rack or a roof box, you've got to make sure you spec the roof rails. Uh, there is no difference in width between these two cars in roof rails. So in terms of what you can put on the roof, so my roof box is quite wide, so I can either carry a roof box or I can carry two bikes. If you had a narrower roof box, you might be able to carry kind of on half, you could carry the roof box and on the other half, you could carry a bike. So if we're going away for, I don't know, one or two weeks, normally uh, we'll put the roof box on the roof and that just gives us that extra amount of stowage space. So for everyday use, plenty of room. If you wanna go away for a longer trip or if you've got kids in the back and a family, you might find that this uh, even the Clubman being a little bit more practical isn't quite practical enough and you might need to then go and have a roof box on. But they're super easy to fit. The mini roof bars look really smart and then you can fit any kind of accessories onto the top of those. Next up for the driver anyway, the really important bit, driving position and general driver creature comforts. Yes, a very familiar place. I love the driving position of this car. But in comparison to the Countryman, the most important thing probably to state 
is the fact that you sit much lower down in the car and you kind of that envelops you into the car and for me it gives you a far more engaging driving experience now i've got the 2019 model so i've got the analog clocks in front of me and i if you watch my countryman review already i really don't like the new uh, electronic display i would much rather have the analog clocks however what i do like in the countryman is the way that they've upgraded the central nav screen so when you're using apple carplay it's now full screen instead of two-thirds screen which totally does my head in everything else in here very very similar it's just a little bit you, you you sat in lower you feel a bit more enveloped in the car and for me that makes you more engaged in the drive but let's head on over to the countryman and have a look at that Now then, instantly sat higher up. No great surprise there. But the roof line or roof height is higher, but the just general cabin position is much higher up the road. You have a much more elevated driving position, which I know many people like. What that does do though, is it just disengages you from the car a little bit. You feel sat on it rather than in it. Everything else in here, mentioned the TFT screen in front of me, don't like that but I do like the swoop of the dash um, it just has a I know a very different feel but I like it a lot and I like the red accents and the kind of piano black work it's a really nice cabin now in terms of driver room clearly we've talked about the clubman having slightly less room for a passenger in the back but in terms of driver room there is plenty of room for the driver i've got actually probably a little bit of travel left in the seat if i wanted to go back a little bit further there's plenty of adjustment to the steering wheel you can kind of move it up and down and in and out so you can get a nice driving position but yeah not bad for me though i'd have the clubman driving position just because you feel sat far far more into the car and it just for me makes the driving experience that little bit better now then it's time to take these two cars out on the road so the first thing i want to consider is ride quality now i must say the ride quality in this countryman is excellent grown up and mature is how i described it in my review but i think that is the best way to describe it it's actually quite unmini like minis have a tendency to be quite firm in their suspension especially the jcw variants and this car really isn't like that actually it's a pleasure on a b road even when the road surface isn't all that good now in terms of ride quality my car is hampered a little bit because of the upgrade i did to wheels and tires so the countryman was running on 19 inch rims but two 2545 profile tires i'm still running 19 inch rims on this but the clubman has two 45 30 profile tires much much smaller profile and what that means is a much much firmer ride um, and it's been quite a while since i've driven a clubman that isn't mine that has normal tires but from what i remember the ride did feel a little bit more firm than the countryman so ride quality wise i'd probably give it to the countryman now then I've got the two sporty versions of the Clubman and Countryman behind me, the JCW. So very important question is, what's the noise like? Now, I am cheating a little bit here with my car because I have a Remus race exhaust on my car, which does sound really good, but it will be very interesting to compare a stock JCW exhaust on the Countryman with a Remus race exhaust on the Clubman. Now, what about noise? Well, when you used to buy a JCW back in the day, they were known for uh, burbles and pops and crackles on overrun. I remember when I bought my little Roadster, it popped a lot. Don't expect it when you buy one of these. So this Countryman's just running the standard JCW exhaust. And honestly, I haven't heard a pop or a splutter or anything like that since I've had it. In fact, even at startup, it sounds like this. One 
once you're on the road, however, if I just drop it into sport box and accelerate away a little bit. That piped in noise sounds just like my car, but it really doesn't deliver the auditory drama and pleasure that I'd like, but that's just the world we live in today. Manufacturers just cannot make cars sound as good as they used to. Now noise-wise, I'm sorry, but there's no comparison, and I am, I guess, playing unfair. It's like taking a machine gun to a knife fight. Um, this Remus exhaust really does sound nice. When the car starts and at stationary rev, it sounds like this. loads more burbles and popples and cracks. Now you don't get so many of those when you're driving. If you come into a corner and you change down from maybe third to second, you will get some pops on overrun, but not as bad as something like my Roadster, which is frankly ridiculous. So if you want that extra engagement you'd get from the noise, then for me, getting an OPF back exhaust upgrade is something well worth doing because you're just not gonna get that from a stock exhaust. As I've mentioned already, these are the performance variants of both cars. Same engine, same drivetrain, 306 horsepower, 450 newton meters of torque, whopping great big Brembo brakes on the front. So it would be rude not to do a naught to 60 and back down to naught test, side by side. Three, two, one, go, go. 60. And finally for me, these two cars are all about driving enjoyment and driving engagement. So let's find a decent bit of B-road and give them both a good spanking. Driving enjoyment, there's only one place. Gear stick to the left, manual gear change. Petroped hill climb. Oh, complete hero going up the hill. I'm gonna to have to slow down for him. Oh man. Now then, let's resume, shall we? See now, it really shouldn't be able to do that. It's actually pretty competent in the corners. It's got a bit of body roll, but so much traction. And the gearbox and the drivetrain just feel so familiar to me, so similar to the Clubman. But it's got the go and the pull to overcome that extra 50 kilos. And actually, in the corners, it's a really, really exciting, really engaging car to drive. And even the higher driving position doesn't really give you too much of a penalty. And it still has the mini go-kart feel. And I really don't understand how. The steering's nice and it's not quite as twitchy and quite as direct as some of the minis, but it's not bad. Not bad for a car of this size and this weight. Driving enjoyment in the Countryman, pretty good. Now I've driven up this hill many, many times in my car, so I know what's about to happen, but I still love doing it. Into second and then give it some beans. Now, there's a couple of things working in favor of this car, a lower center of gravity, 50 kilos less weight, lower profile tires, better tires. I'm running Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, perhaps the best tires there are instead of the P0s that are on the Countryman. And this car's just, well, it's just brilliant. Oh God, I love my car. So yes, um, it's, it's probably an obvious thing to state, but the Clubman performs better on a road like that than the Countryman. And for me, in terms of driving enjoyment, it therefore delivers a higher level of driving enjoyment. 
It doesn't mean to say, however, that it's not fun driving the Countryman, but the Clubman, it's lighter, it's lower, and it just drives better, I'm afraid to say. So if pure driving enjoyment is your deciding factor, there's only one choice, it's gotta be the Clubman. So there you go, hopefully you found that an interesting comparison road test side by side. To be honest, I love both of these cars. My Clubman is perhaps the best car I've ever owned. I love her to bits in every way. Brilliant performance, really good practicality, and I like the looks as well. And I know it's not a Mini, it's quite a big car, but I really do love the Clubman. So when the Countryman came along, and it is a significantly bigger car and a different segment as well, but so many of the underpinnings are the same. I knew that the performance, the straight line performance anyway, is gonna be very, very similar. You'd spot the difference on a stopwatch, but when you're driving the car, they're very, very similar. It's very difficult to feel the difference in speed between the two. But what I wasn't expecting with the Countryman was the, just the dynamics of the driving experience. It belies its size, it's super nimble, it goes through the corners really well, it doesn't wallow and roll like you think it would. And actually, it delivers that, that, that mini go-kart-like feel driving experience. However, it's got that extra bit of practicality, a little bit more passenger room, a bigger boot, the ability to carry more stuff. And that makes it, for me, a really interesting proposition. If you just have that little, you know, bigger family, a couple of kids, more stuff to carry around. If I was buying one and I had a choice between the two, I'll be honest with you, I'd still take the Clubman every time. However, the Countryman, really, really interesting. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one. I'd love to know which one you choose. Put it in the comments below. But if you enjoyed that one, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. I wanna say a massive thank you to Mini UK for letting me play with the Countryman for the last week. It's been a really great experience. I'm so glad I finally got one on the channel. But that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next film. You take care. Drive safe.